Hi, this is Debbie and I'm delighted to be guesting at W Plus 9 for a little cosy watercolouring today and I'm sharing here on my channel too. Let's jump straight in and I'm going to be using the Cookies and Cocoa set for this card in a style I'm drawn to, that of a focal point of no line watercolour on an otherwise clean and simple card. I have a piece of Archer's Cold Press watercolour card in the Misty and I'm stamping the cups with Antique Linen Distress Ink. This is my favourite ink for new line watercolouring as the ink is highly reactive with water and so blends in beautifully with the paints to leave a new line watercolour look. I decided on a design where three of the cups from the Cookies and Cocoa set overlapped one another. You could stamp and trim out mass to cover the cups as you stamp the marshmallows and subsequent cups, but I went for the easy option and wiped the ink away with my finger from areas I wanted left blank and then stamped. So for each cup I wiped the back rim of the cup before stamping on the card and this left room for me to add the marshmallows. It's not a perfect technique but as the antique linen distress ink will blend in so easily with the watercolour anyway then it doesn't have to be perfect. Each time I stamp the cups once but for the marshmallows I stamp them twice and that's because I intend to use this ink as the main colour for the marshmallows and so wanted to get a good clear impression. Whereas the cups I was less concerned about as I knew I wanted to bring in a reasonable depth of colour from the watercolours and the stamped outline is purely serving as a guide for where to paint. With the outlines of the cups now stamped I'm moving on to the painting section of this video. I've sped this section up so that I can leave as much of the painting process in the video as possible. I'm using Daniel Smith watercolours and I've chosen three colours for the cups which were inspired by some candles I just bought. Although I enjoy all the bright traditional colours of the winter season, I'm always more drawn to muted shades and so for this card I challenged myself to use the muted colours I love. I mixed a grey green, a dilute pink and a dusky grey purple. For each cup I'm laying down a light layer of colour and while the paint is still wet I'm bringing in a stronger mix of the colour in areas I would expect shading such as the edges of the cup, under the rim of the cup and around the handle. I'll then let that area dry while I move on to painting somewhere else. Although I'm not perfect at remembering this, you want to ensure one area is dry before painting an area next to it, otherwise the colours will move and blend together. Sometimes that's the look I want, but for today I want the edges of the cups to be clearly defined, and so I'm moving around the different areas painting where I can while other areas dry. I do prefer the paint to dry naturally, but I'm impatient, and so I use the heat tool to dry areas off However, I do leave them as long as I can before bringing in the heat tool so that there's as much time as possible for the shadow areas to smooth and blend out. For the marshmallows, I'm using the Antique Linen Distress Ink that I stamped them in as the base colour. I'm bringing in a little brown and then dotting in some of the pale pink that I used for the cup at the back. I was imagining these marshmallows to be a mixture of pink and white ones, then dusted with cocoa powder, perhaps even a little melty and sinking into the cocoa. More than anything, I wanted to get some colour onto these marshmallows rather than trying to paint them as white marshmallows against a white background. Moving on, and I'm now painting the pink cup at the back. I want this cup to read as pink rather than red, and yet I want to make sure I have some shadows to bring in dimension too. And to be honest, I find that a hard balance. Too much of the darker colours and the cup won't read as pink anymore, so I'm being careful when adding the shadows. Now that the base layer of colour on the cups is down, I am bringing in more layers and deeper and darker colours and shadows. This will help to give the cups a rounded look rather than a flat look that they have after the first layer of paint. Building up layers like this is my favourite way to paint with watercolours. I'm quite a tentative painter and therefore starting light and building up to darker colours really suits me rather than going in strong at the beginning and then regretting it. Little by little I can keep adding layers until I'm happy. Also, I really like the extra texture you get as the layers overlap one another. This method does take more time than going in with rich colours at the beginning, but I really enjoy the painting process and so I'm in no hurry, but simply enjoy putting paint on paper. To finish off the painting, I added a light shadow beneath the cups, which I blended out with plenty of water. This will help ground the cups and stop them looking like they're floating in mid-air. Then I took a little white gouache and I added a few highlights. Gouache is an opaque watercolour and so even though I'm painting a pale colour on top of a darker one, it will still show up. Once I was happy with the watercolour on the cups, I splattered a little of the green watercolour mixture around the card and then I added splatters of a solution of perfect pearls. This is one of my most favourite ways to add sparkle highlights 
and that ethereal look that I like. With all the wet work now complete, I've placed the watercolour card back in the misty and I'm going to stamp and white heat emboss the snowflake from the cookies and cocoa set on a couple of the cups. You could do this process before watercolouring and the watercolour would puddle around the lines of the image and the embossing would resist the watercolour. However, I find I get a cleaner look to the embossing if I stamp and emboss after watercolouring. I've treated the card with an anti-static powder bag to help prevent embossing powder randomly sticking everywhere and then I've stamped the snowflake several times on the cup with clear embossing powder. Because the cold press watercolour card I'm using is textured, then you have to stamp at least twice, if not three or four times, to ensure you get a good impression. Then I sprinkled with white embossing powder and melted the powder with a preheated heat tool. So after stamping the snowflake on the green and purple cup, I then added a heart on the pink cup, and with the focal point for this card now finished, I trimmed the card down until it was just smaller than an A2 card base. I wasn't entirely sure where I wanted everything placed, and so using a larger piece of card than I needed meant I could leave this decision until the end when I trimmed the piece down. I don't waste any card as I use the offcuts on other projects and even the smaller pieces I keep for testing watercolours as I paint. For the sentiment I chose that it's time to get cosy greeting from the cookies and cocoa set. I treated a scrap of slate card with a powder tool, stamped the sentiment in clear embossing ink, sprinkled with white embossing powder and heat set. I then used a scalpel and ruler to trim the piece into a banner to add to the card. I struggle with straight lines and find this method to be the most reliable as I can use the lines on the clay ruler to ensure I'm cutting things straight. I've used the heat tool on this piece of card a lot and although it is held up well, there is a little warping and so to help keep it flat, I used ample foam tape on the back before adding it to a Nina Desert Storm card base. I also added foam tape to the back of the sentiment strip and then added that to the card so that it overlapped a couple of the cocoa cups and I used a T-square ruler to ensure I had it on straight. To finish off the card I added a few sequins in toning pastel colours to bring in a little more sparkle for the season and kept those in place with Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And that completes this relatively clean and simple Cozy Cocoa card using a focal point of no line watercolour cups in a muted winter colour palette. I want to thank you for joining me today and to Dawn for inviting me to guess for W plus 9. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at limedudadesign.com. If you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.